Given that cities are slated to grow to hold 75% of the world's population by the year 2050, we need an architectural reform that will serve our needs now and in the future. I'm proposing an adaptable architectural residential system that can grow based on demand over time. Uh, components would be steel superstructure and modular shipping container components as they're rapidly uh, increasing in population in the United States. <laughs> All right. So the images you're going to see first uh, are... Before we go on, sorry. <laughs> how, how do everybody feel about that? Raise your hand if you want to hear more. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> With that, I welcome you to expand Philadelphia. Uh, this site will be a... Um, <laughs> Adaptable architectural system, uh, residential in nature, in the Callow Hill District of Philadelphia, the least dense region of the center of the city. Uh, the first two images you'll see are two distinctly different phases of this project, and it will be able to develop organically over time. Uh, the low initial front-end investment cost for developers will enable them to find more opportunities in the city without limiting the property's potential for the future. Uh, this particular neighborhood has 32% of its land vacant, uh, and there are also exciting initiatives going on, including the Viaduct Park, Spring Garden Greenway Movement, and the Chinatown Development Corporation plans. So this will work in synergy with those. Uh, you can begin to see the vertical circulation here and the residential units developing on different levels. Uh, what will be important is to activate this space and create a sense of place. Uh, so. Outdoor spaces in this central area will be programmed specifically for play, for dog park areas, and for market spaces. Uh, while the corridors and active hallways develop, um, there will be specific market areas on the, on the ground floor, I'm sorry. Um, so additional residential units all above and then the commercial and retail spaces on the ground floor will keep this an active and safe area. So in addition to this building expanding over time, the residential units will also adapt. Uh, it'll be important to keep this an exciting area all year round. So creating a permanent void in the building will enable winter sun to reach the interior plaza space. Um, there will be a system of mechanical closets and vertical streets that allow the components to tie into the superstructure. Uh, and it will also be important to break up the irregularities with internal social opportunity spaces. These can be um, public in nature, be seating, interior or exterior, as well as laundry or utility spaces for the smaller residential units. Um, this will create an atmosphere that people want to stay, uh, and another thing that will enable them to stay is the ability of their residential units to expand over time. So you can, for instance, start with a 640 square foot unit and add a series of modules over time to create a 960 square foot unit. Similarly, you could do that, begin with a 1,280 square foot unit, and move to the 1,920. This is achieved through the inherent stackability of shipping containers. The shipping containers will be um, prefabricated off-site, including an interior mechanical floor system, finishes and furnishings, as well as an exterior cladding system of insulation. Uh, there will also be a steel uh, structure that will install them and will always be present on the site, keeping it active and exciting. Here you can get a better sense of how the utilities are tying in through the uh, mechanical closet space and into the corridor. All the plumbing fixtures have been located um, to facilitate this connection. Um, and also you'll understand, looking more specifically at the units, um, the ability for them to adapt. So this here is a 960 square foot unit. Uh, the long facade has an infill glazing system with adaptable and removable panels that will facilitate this uh, adaptable and changing architecture. And then the areas in plan in gray are the additive components that would develop over time. Uh, here you see one, and here you see one of um, many possible finish selections. So this shows an industrial look and characteristic. Um, more traditional materials can be offered for those that uh, have a traditional preference. So based on this pitch and these few short minutes, I hope you too find the excitement in an adaptable residential architectural system for developers, citizens, and cities at large. Thank you. Uh, shipping containers are significantly less than uh, any uh, other building form besides prefabrication. Uh, so it is 100, 
to $200, 150 to 175 dollars a square foot. How does that compare to traditional construction? That is significantly less than traditional construction, but more than prefabricated construction. Unfortunately, the drawbacks of prefabricated construction can be seen in Habitat 67 uh, and the capsule tower. Those pre-designed systems did not operate the way they were intended to. So by using this very regulated form, I'm hoping to mitigate that. There, and there, there are some modular products you can close that mm -hmm. area that was it the, the modules and by temple is, is one. Any sense of how I mean so like you're referencing older projects, newer modular construction, any idea how it compares to that kind of uh, no? I think the you know the cost is less, but I'm concerned more about the long-term function and movability of components. So, so you can take the, you can take these down. They, they can, not only can you rack them, but you can take them down. Right. And them okay. Got it. Do you know how much a, a modular unit cost? Um, like a uh, like a prefab modular unit. What the limitations are on it? The dimensional limitations. Yeah, the limitations or the of construction. Um. Well, I think that a lot of the limitations in whole um, composed factory systems would be the the connectability of components. It's actually another com issue that I dealt with here was the reuse of, of the steel shipping containers. Um, so I think that while I considered that and the different options that it would allow for more freedom in design and things like that, um, save a significant amount of energy converting these to occupiable units versus melting them down on the note of 7,000 kilowatt hours a unit. I think the, the main thing is, um, and the, the question how much is the cost of the, when you come up, the, the idea of the reuse of the shipping containers, right, we're at a point now where it's like, okay, it melts, right? I mean, sure. we've all seen it, we've all seen it a hundred times, and it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. What's different about this? What sets us apart? Why is it? If it's used so many times, why isn't it so more widely spread? There's, there's, there's got to be sure. a reason why it's sure. not everywhere if it's so cheap and economical and it's manual and modular, right? So the modules at Temple, you can only go four stories with wood module construction. You can go up to about seven or eight with steel module construction. You need to know those limitations when you're comparing a new system to that. So sure. you can immediately fire the tracks back and shut people down and be like, no, this is better. And this is exactly why. Absolutely. It costs fifty-seven dollars a square foot on average for a wood frame modular construction. You know, uh, yep. you know you just, these are all the facts that you should just know. Because then, when somebody asks a question, sure, you're like you're very <laughs> knowledgeable about it. It's not kind of like it's cheaper. Trust me. You know? Right. Um, first of all, in the presentation, you started out like way too fast. You know, you're, jam you're trying to jam in way too much. Blah, 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 blah. Sure. That's <laughs> just I'm tired just listening. Trying to f keep up, basically. So you got to kind of, you do have to cover it, but you got to kind of ease it to a little yeah. bit. We're all going to catch up with where, where your project is. Sure. Um, the, all the images are way too dark. I couldn't even see half of it. You just got to brighten everything up because one of the things that we're, what we want to be sold on is the, the bright airiness of your project. Sure. Right? The, the new, fresh idea. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not this doom and gloom. I live in a box up in the sky. You know, type of thing. Um, I'm a little confused on how the kind of expansion modular happens since you're going to be stacking these things on top of each other and there's already a neighbor next to you. Mm -hmm. Or do you get a big empty frame? Uh, they would all slide in from the exterior. So they would not go, they were designed so that they could easily slide in, in, that, in that way. I guess the last thing was you showed the slide when it was like four stories and the next one was like 20 stories. Right. Um, some kind of organic in between would help us understand that it can grow over time. Sure. Not just overnight it's 20 stories. But I think it's a, it was very well put together. Um, I would agree. I think uh, really well done, uh, really knowledgeable, although you know we were asking some tough questions. Um, for the purposes of your initial presentation, I think you had a lot of great facts and a lot of great answers to the questions. Uh, understandably, you might not always know the answer, so how do you you know, try to get through the conversation, and I think you did a great job at that. I do agree the speed at first was a little fast. I have that same exact problem, so I know, you know that that takes a lot of practice to get over. I'm still working on it myself. Um, and the thing that I liked about it and how unique it was is what it reminded me of is um, in kind of dock, dockyards for you know luxury boats and they put all the yachts stacked one over the other and they have and to have a crane say built in 
is I think those are the unique selling points that I haven't seen before. So if you have examples of that or if you could find any, if not, that's not a bad sure. thing either because then that's really unique. So those are definitely the highlights. Uh, one other question I had is who's, who's, the, who's the market? I would, it would be uh, Generation Y, the generation that's demanding urban living, um, walkable spaces, and likes to feel part of something larger, even if they actually aren't. So. So I, I think you have a great opportunity in here to maybe sell that a little bit more and sell some of the community and stuff that makes them and makes one like, like this exciting. And also think about maybe other uses where it could be applicable student housing, military housing, sure. disaster relief, all, all that stuff. Yeah, and commercial space, you know, retail workspace. The master plan, you mentioned the, uh, green, the Greenway, the, the Spring Garden Greenway, the, um, the viaduct. The viaduct? Uh, master plan that shows where those are and what they are, because you, know, mm -hmm. you, know, you can't expect everybody to know what all those are and what the extents of those are. Sure. So, a really clean diagram that shows how mm -hmm. you're not just a building on island, you know, and, um, but it is literally connected. That's, that's going to be part of the reason why it gets exactly. Sure. All right, that's uh, time for number one. Thanks. Thank you. It's great, yeah.